Welcome to part one of a multi-part series discussing the feature functionality of Microchip's new MCP3X6X family of Delta Sigma 80D converters. Some of the key features you'll find on the MCP3X6X family of devices are as follows. A 153.6 kilosample per second 16 or 24 bit Delta Sigma modulator with oversampling ratios ranging from 32 to 98,304. A sync decimation filter with both 50 and 60 hertz rejection. A programmable gain stage with gains ranging from 1/3x to 64x. Device options for 1, 2, or 4 differential channels, which can also be used in a 2, 4, or 8 single ended configuration via a front end analog multiplexer. An internal temperature sensor, which can be used for simple temperature measurements or used in conjunction with the digital offset and gain air calibration features to compensate for the 4 nanovolts per degree C offset air drift or the 0.5 parts per million per degree C gain air drift. A set of burnout current sources are provided for testing open or short circuit conditions resulting from faulty or damaged sensors. An internal 4.9 MHz oscillator is provided, supporting data rates up to 38,400 without the need for an external clock. An SPI interface, which supports the standard SPI 00 and 11 modes with static and incremental read-write commands, with support for a single byte fast command to serve as a quick way to perform operations such as device reset or conversion start, as well as entering power saving states such as standby, shutdown, or full shutdown modes. A 16-bit SPI communication CRC is also available for securing read operations and maintaining data integrity against EMI interference or large transient spikes. And lastly, the device offers a digital output pin, which can serve one of two purposes. The first and most likely use of the digital output pin is as an open drain interrupt alert, which can be easily interfaced to an MCU by way of a pull-up resistor and used to alert the host controller of events such as a power on reset, a configuration CRC error, which indicates an unexpected change in configuration register settings, as well as when a conversion has started and when new data is available to be read. The other function of the digital output pin is to provide access to the raw data output of the Delta Sigma modulator. In this mode, the output data of the modulator will bypass the on-chip decimation filter and allow the user to implement their own external sync filter or a more advanced digital filter to perform the decimation of the output bitstream and produce an output code with a desired resolution. Some additional features which we'll cover in coming videos are a low power full shutdown mode, which consumes less than five microamps, one shot and continuous conversion modes, an input scan mode, which will automatically and sequentially scan and convert a predefined set of analog inputs, a programmable bias circuit, which allows for the adjustment of current consumption of the device based on the application's required sampling rate. A higher current consumption setting allows a higher analog master clock rate, which in turn, will increase the baseband of input signals which can be converted. And finally, a few security features to help protect the integrity of data retrieval and device configuration. These include a configuration register CRC, a configuration register write access lock, and an SPI read command CRC. The first topics we'll cover will be a short discussion on the resolutions, oversampling ratios, and data rates available on the MCP3X6X ADCs. The table shown here was extracted from the MCP3564 device datasheet and illustrates how the resolution, OSR, and data rates are tied together and how making the selection for one of the system parameters based on the requirements of the application will effectively determine the settings of the other two parameters. Note how the resolution of the ADC increases with increased OSR. The higher the OSR, the more averaging that occurs during the decimation process, which in turn increases the resolution of the output code. While the table shows a 24-bit resolution is attainable with an OSR of 256 or higher, it should be noted that 16-bit MCP346X family of devices cannot have a resolution greater than 16-bit, even with an increased OSR. 
On the 16-bit devices, the major effect the OSR has on the performance of the device is an improved signal-to-noise ratio relative to the signal-to-noise ratio achieved by lower OSRs. In addition to the resolution, the OSR also determines the output data rate of the ADC as a result of setting the notches in the frequency response of the decimation sync filter transfer function. A couple of data rates we want to pay particular attention to from this table are the 50 and 60 Hz data rates and the minimum OSRs needed to achieve them. We'll explain in a moment the significance of these data rates and what can be gained by using such low data rates, but before we do, let's take a look at what the decimation filter frequency response looks like on the MCP3X6X family of devices. Here, we show the decimation sync filter frequency response when an OSR of 20,480 is selected. As was stated previously, in addition to defining the data rate, the OSR will also define the frequency response of the decimation filter. With that, note the notch placement in the frequency response at 60 Hz when an OSR of 20,480 is selected. As shown in the previous table, an OSR of 20,480 also results in a data rate of 60 samples per second. Therefore, a direct correlation between the data rate and frequency response of the decimation filter can be made. In other words, by selecting an OSR that results in a data rate of 60 samples per second, a large attenuation in the frequency response will also occur at 60 Hz. Lastly, note the placement of the attenuation notches occurring at 120 and 180 Hz. In fact, attenuation notches will be placed in the frequency response of the decimation filter at every integer multiple of 60 Hz all the way to 153.6 kHz, which correlates to a maximum data rate of 153.6 kilosamples per second. Similarly, here's what the decimation filter frequency response looks like when an OSR of 24,576 is selected to achieve a data rate of 50 samples per second. As with the 60 sample per second data rate, a 50 sample per second data rate establishes a large attenuation at 50 Hz and every integer multiple thereof. So why have we chosen to highlight the 50 and 60 sample per second data rates? Well, the reason for this is that AC electrical power is distributed throughout the world at one of two frequencies, either 50 Hertz, as you would see in Europe and Asia, or 60 Hertz, as you would see in the US. And unfortunately, these frequencies can be picked up as unwanted interference on electrical signals. For example, have you ever listened to an audio recording with a clear but subtle humming which can be heard in the background of the audio? Well, this humming is commonly referred to as mains hum and can be filtered out of the audio signal using a filter like the sync filter used on the MCP3X6X Delta Sigma ADCs. All you need to do is make the proper data rate selection by way of the OSR and the frequency response of the sync filter will be defined to achieve a frequency rejection in direct correlation with the data rate. So how do we achieve this performance? Well, the resolution, data rate, and frequency rejection can all be configured with one register setting on the MCP3X6X family of devices. By simply setting the OSR30 bits of the config1 configuration register, such that the total OSR is either 24,576 or 20,480, a frequency rejection of 50 or 60 Hz can be achieved and filter out unwanted interference such as mains hum. And finally, as was alluded to earlier, the other advantage of using such high OSRs is an improved signal-to-noise ratio. The improved signal-to-noise ratio is the result of the inherent noise shaping process which takes place in all Delta Sigma modulators. And while a comprehensive discussion of noise shaping is beyond the scope of our discussion, in simple terms, it can be described as a process of pushing the quantization noise error out into higher frequencies, resulting in a lower noise floor in the frequency band of interest, and thereby achieving a higher signal-to-noise ratio of the signal being sampled. Let's take a moment to recap what we've covered thus far. First, we highlighted the key features of the MCP3X6X family of Delta Sigma A to D converters as follows. A Delta Sigma modulator with a maximum data rate of 153.6 kilosamples per second, a front-end analog channel multiplexer capable of both differential or single-ended configurations, an on-chip temperature sensor, which can be used for simple temperature measurements or temperature compensation of the offset and gain air drift of the ADC, a set of burnout current sources for detection of damaged or faulty sensors, 
a standard SPI interface offering a CRC air check of recommand communication sequences, an internal 4.9 MHz oscillator mitigating or eliminating the need for an external clock, a digital output pin which can be used as an IRQ alert or for accessing the raw data output of the Delta Sigma modulator, and lastly, we discussed how the oversampling ratio establishes the resolution, data rate, and frequency response of the decimation filter, and how the selection of the OSR can affect the signal-to-noise performance of the device, and how this is achieved through a process known as noise shaping. With that, this will conclude our presentation on the resolutions, oversampling ratios, and data rates available on Microchip's new MCP3X6X family of Delta Sigma A to D converters. For more information regarding the MCP3X6X family of devices, please go to www.microchip.com, click on the search glass in the top right corner of the home page, enter the part number of the device of interest, and select the device product page, where all collateral, including the device data sheet and any demo and evaluation boards available for the device, will be provided. In closing, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to view this short video regarding the key feature set of Microchip's new MCP3X6X family of Delta Sigma A to D converters. Please be sure to check back with us later for part two of the key feature series, where we'll discuss the implementation of the internal temperature sensor, as well as the burnout current sources, and how they can be used for the detection of faulty or damaged sensors. Thank you, and have a nice day.